entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Street shooting. And suspense. Sort of. Next time, make sure you tie it hard and fast before you uncoil your rope. Here, take him back. I've got to go to the office. Annie Lofty, look what the man gave me for catching his calf. A whole silver dollar. Say, you keep on earning money like that, and you'll be the richest boy in the county. Well, it all depends on what he does with his earnings, Lofty. Oh, I think I can afford a pound of licorice, a big bag of jelly beans, a sorted course, so you and Lofty can have your choice. And one of those big chocolate bars that cost 20 cents. Hag, that's the first sense I've heard since you started talking. I wish it were common sense. I'm really surprised at you. What did I say wrong this time? Well, I think I remember something about you wanting to go to college someday. Gosh, Annie, a dollar won't put me through college, will it? Well, it will if you save it. And then another one and another one. And well, before you know it, you've got $100 and then 500 Gosh. Now, what's it going to be, Tag? College or candy? Candy. <laughs> Tag. Okay, college. But I don't know much about banks, so if you and Lofty will go with me, I can give this dollar to Mr. Lorimer to put in his bank. <laughs> All right, Tag. Believe me, Mr. Lorimer, this is one part of being a bank examiner that I don't like. But the safety of the depositors must come first. Yes, of course, Mr. Pollard, I understand that. But this whole thing just leaves me flabbergasted. Well, if I were you, I'd try and keep it quiet. News like this gets out, you could have a run in the bank. Now, everything will be all right if you'll just give me a little time. Time? Mr. Lorimer, I'm afraid the most I could promise would be five days. Goodbye, sir. Oh, Mr. Hadley, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ma. I, after what I just heard, I want my money out of this bank. Every red cent of it. Now, now, Hadley, don't fly off the handle. Give me a chance to explain. Explain nothing. I want my money now and in cash. You're not going to get it by manhandling me. I'll get it all right if I have to get it myself. Just a minute, Hadley. Take it easy. Who told you to come button in? I said take it easy. What's trouble, Mr. Lormer? Hadley came in here and demanded his total balance. And when I tried to talk to him, you saw what happened. Well, doesn't a depositor have to give notice by law? Yes, but I'm not hiding behind any law. You start helping yourself to that money, I'm going to lock you up. It's my money, if I ever get it. You'll get your money, if Mr. Lorimer says you will. And I do. It may take a little time. Well, it won't take me a little time. You'll see. What about all this on? The bank's in trouble, Annie. Come into the office. I'll show you what I mean. Then this is not a genuine government bond. Counterfeit. Absolutely worthless. And you have no idea how they got in your vault and placed the real bonds? Not the slightest. Like every bank in the country, we got our bonds from the district distributor. And in our case, the Mesa City Bank, where Mr. Brown is president. I see. And nobody but you opens the bond drawer in the vault. No, I keep the keys with me all the time. Just the same. I still want to put my dollar in your bank. Tag, right now, that's the nicest thing anyone could say to me. I'm going to try to make up the loss. But to do so, I'll have to sell my own holdings. 
And if I'm forced to sacrifice them in a sale to meet a deadline, I won't get 50 cents on the dollar. Not enough to save our depositors from a heavy loss. I've known a lot of men, decent ones too, that wouldn't go that far. If they'd just give me a little more time, but if they start a run on the bank now, we'll all be wiped out. Folks, neighbors, please give me a chance. If you want your money back, give me time to raise it for you. Don't demand it all now, because if you do, there's no way of anyone getting it. Uh, what'd I tell you? I knew he'd say that. It's our money. I say we better get all we can before he loses all of it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Henry! Henry! Uh, you say wait, but how long? Well, Bertha, that's hard to say. A few weeks, maybe longer. A few weeks, maybe longer? Oh, but I must have my money this week or I'll lose all my cattle. Listen, friends, you all know what happens when cattle stampede. An awful lot of them get hurt. Well, the same thing can and will happen here. It isn't as though the bank were cleaned out. Mr. Lorimer can cash a lot of checks. Providing they're not too big. Why don't you give him a chance to raise all the money that he owes you? Fine chance of that. Look, why don't you all go back home and figure out the least amount of money that you'll need for, say, a week, and then come back. And Mr. Lorimer will cash all of your checks for you tomorrow. Oh, uh, sure. By tomorrow, Lorimer will be a hundred miles away. I say it's our money. Let's get it before Lorimer steals the rest of it. Yes, Hadley, I heard just about enough out of you. If they paid you what you're worth, you shouldn't have ten cents in this bank. I'm going in. Cell in there where you can cool off. Please don't cry, Bertha. I can't help it. I've worked so hard since I lost my husband and my son. I know that. You've been very brave, and I know things are going to work out for you. How can they? That cat alone I've got with High Simmons comes due to have to tomorrow. You know, High, he ain't going to wait a week. You'll have my whole herd over at the slaughterhouse. Bertha, you're not going to lose your cattle to High Simmons. Tomorrow, when you find out how much money Mr. Lorimer can give you, figure out the rest and then come tell me. You, Annie? Mm-hmm. Tag and I have a little saved up that we won't be needing for a while. At least not until he goes away to college. That's right, Mrs. Davis. You come tell us and you're welcome to it. Oh, Annie. <laughs> All oh, women, all they ever think of is kissing. <laughs> Annie, Lofty, I can never thank you enough. No need to thank us. Our job hasn't started yet. We have to figure out how you got those counterfeit bonds. We certainly do. And I don't think anyone would go around counterfeiting bonds just to pawn them off on one country bank. No, no, I guess you're right. Tomorrow I'll ride over and check the other banks in Diablo County. And I'll call on Mr. Brown the president of the government agency bank in Mesa City. I sure hope you can find an answer to all this. I don't know how you can be so calm about things. With Annie Oakley tracking down those counterfeit bonds, we're in for trouble and plenty of it. I'm not backing down for any blonde female and neither are you two. Look, Tyler, Pollard's right. We know this gal. Maybe we should lie quiet until she gets interested in something else. I ain't gonna lay quiet. I know more about how banks are run than either of you guys. It took me three years to figure this out, another six months to print those bonds. Yes, but I took the risk of putting them in the banks in place of real ones. And I could get lynched for starting runs on the banks. We're not gonna quit now until every bank in the county is busted and I can buy them in for 10 cents on the dollar. Is that clear to you both? Let me tell you something, Mr. Tyler. Banks aren't the only buildings with bars in the windows. You don't say. Yes, I do say. I also say I'm getting out of here. Now, just when did you say you're quitting, Mr. Pollard? And you, Hadley? Uh, I didn't say I was quitting. Good. 
Now let's forget what just happened and get down to business. Miss Oakley, I can't tell you how awful I feel hearing about Lorimer's bank. Somehow I feel it must be my fault. Your fault? I don't see how. Up to four months ago, this never happened. Then in the past few weeks, these counterfeit bonds show up. Why do you say it's your fault? I've only been head of the bank four months. Who was head of the bank before you, Mr. Brown? Oh, Sherman Hotchkiss. Went up to Denver one weekend. Poor fella. Telegram came back, he'd been killed. You mean murder? Oh, no. It was an accident. Then when I took over the bank, we checked the books, found some irregularities, a few thousand dollars unaccounted for, but no counterfeit bonds. They showed up only recently. Well, then you don't think there's any connection between Mr. Hotchkiss's irregularities and the bonds? Oh, none at all. I wish there were. I might not feel so conscience-stricken. Well, I appreciate what you have told me, Mr. Brown. And if you do find out any information, please let us know at once. I certainly will. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Tag said you want to see me, Annie. Oh, yes, I do, Mr. Lormer. Sit down. I stopped at the San Juan Bank on my way back today, and something very peculiar was happening. And... Well, I'm glad you're both here. You know, right now, I can't prove it. But I'm pretty sure that Hadley, in some ways, mixed up with these counterfeit bonds. I don't see how he could be. He hasn't been in the bank three times in three months. Maybe not, Mr. Lormer, but that's exactly what I was fixing to tell you. Well, to make a long story short, I checked the banks over Clarkstown, Cherokee, and Bison Falls today. Have they found some of the bonds, too? Only the Clarkstown Bank. And after their examiner left, a man answering Hadley's description came in there, too, and demanded all his money. Well, did you get a name and address on the man, Lofty? Yep. The name he gave was Harmon. And the address, and here's the strange thing. Post office box 119, Diablo. Box 119? Well, that's the same address that a man calling himself Hawley used when he opened a large account at the San Juan Bank. Then it is Hadley. 119 is the address he gave me, too. Unless it's some sort of coincidence. It's no coincidence, Mr. Lormer, believe me. Someone is trying to bank up the banks around these parts, and Hadley is mixed up in it. Can't you arrest him? No, not yet. At least we have an idea where to start looking. Well, we'll keep watching the post office when he gets back in town. Then we'll follow him and see where he lives and see who's mixed up in this with him. Well, thank you. Oh, Lofty. This is only a woman's intuition, but I think the accidental death of Hotchkiss should be investigated in Denver. Annie, this is only a man's hunch, but I think you're trying to send me there. Oh, but you'll love it in Denver, Lofty. Mm -mm. Not when I'm worried about you here. Well, then you hurry on back, and I promise to stay out of trouble. You know, for you, that won't be easy. Oh. <laughs> I'll have to use this buckboard before I lose him. If Lofty comes back, tell him where I've gone. All right, sis. You win both rounds.
Looks like he rolled down a prairie dog hole, like Alice in Wonderland. Oh, hello, Mr. Hadley. Uh, Miss Oakley, off the beaten track, huh? That's my place there. Why don't you go on in and be neighborly? Oh, that's very nice of you. I guess our team could stand watering. Ah, that'd be my pleasure. brought home some visitors. Oh, yes, Mr. Tyler. This is Miss Oakley and her brother. Happy to know you, miss, son. I'm Mr. Hadley's hired hand. Hey, why don't you go inside and set a spell while I water your team? Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Tyler. Well, look at all that hay. Yeah. You know, like the folks say, make hay when the sun shines? <laughs> well, we had a mighty hot, sunny summer. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Mr. Hadley, there's some cold, fresh milk in the house. Yeah, maybe we can find some chocolate cake for the young man. Gee, yeah. that'd be swell. <laughs> I'll take care of your team. Don't worry. see why. It's been cut about three quarters of the way through by a real expert. The pull of the team frayed the rest and then it separated. Now who do you think would do a thing like that? A man that calls himself Mr. Tyler. He said he'd take care of our team. Well, when we get this fixed up and get back and find Lofty, there's a team of men back there that we're gonna take care of and right. Well, if I had any doubts before, any, just trying to kill you and Tag sure ends it. What about that Mr. Hotchkiss you found out that didn't die in Denver? And probably nowhere else. No, I'm sure he's still alive somewhere. This whole thing is being engineered by somebody who knows banks. And Hotchkiss knows them very well. Well, your guesses have all been right so far, Annie, but we can't prove a thing. Not until we find Hotchkiss. He wouldn't dare be in this county. Somebody would recognize him. Not if he wore a full beard with eyeglasses. You mean like Mr. Tyler? Right. And we'd better get out to Hadley's place right now, but they still think we've been killed. If anyone's around, they must be inside. Yeah, they're in that barn. Lofty, you and Tag check the barn. And if there's no one around, take a look at that hay. It looked kind of mildew to me. I'll sneak around behind the house and see if I can look inside. So you're still scared. Well, it's all set up to wreck all the banks I want. Now I don't need you anymore. Look, when I went in with you on this, all I was supposed to do was switch bonds when I was examining banks. I didn't figure on murder. Me neither. 
So just give us our share. What do you see, Lofty? It might be engraving tool, Peg. Give me that lantern. Well, I'm crossing the border. You won't have to worry about me talking. If you ever do talk, you never will again. My knife works just as well on throats as it does on harnesses. Hotchkiss, I should have turned you in when I found you stealing bank funds in Mesa City. Now you're trying to pawn the phony bonds off on us. Get out of the way, Hadley. This time, Mr. Hotchkiss is really going to die. Only it's going to be right here, not up in Denver. Look out! That's enough. Carla. Carla, stop. Don't! I'll give you the real part. Stay here, Tank. What's the meaning of this? It probably means that you and your friends will spend the next 20 years in the federal penitentiary. What happened, Annie? Tyler or Hotchkiss or whatever his name is got away. I'll find him. or I'll burn this place to the ground with the brat in it. They certainly made hay while the banks failed, didn't they? <laughs> well, as soon as we get Hadley to a doctor, we'll lock all three of them up. All right, come on, let's go. There you are, Tag. The dollar you put in yourself, the ten dollars Bertha Davis wanted you to have for the loan you made her, and a hundred dollars from me for helping break up Hodgkiss's little scheme to own every bank in the county. Golly gosh! Maybe with all this money, I can go to college next year. <laughs> oh, it takes more than money to get into college, Tag. Okay, then if I can't go to college, you know what? I'm going to buy $111 worth of candy. Young man, if you buy $10 worth of candy with that money, you'll have to spend the other 101 for castor oil and doctor bills. <laughs> Besides, I think with Hotch Kiss Pollard and Hadley in jail, we've had enough people around here that have had to take their medicine. <laughs> <laughs>